welcome back to another fun-filled lesson of actual English. I am Jennifer Clyde. Now, we did previously talk about our elementary school years, a lot younger, our childhood years. Now, we are going to grow up a little, I guess, uh, yeah, and focus more on our middle and high school years. Today, we'll be focusing on not so much activities you might have engaged in back in middle and high school, but more about what kind of student you were. So, look back upon your middle and high school years. Think quickly right now, what kind of student were you? Now, to tell you a little bit about myself, when I was in middle school, hmm, I was a very, very shy girl. Now, for those of you that remember, in elementary, I was everywhere. I was running around, fighting with the boys, and most of my friends were guys, boys in elementary school. But from middle school, I suddenly, kind of instantly became a very shy little lady. And also, throughout my high school years, I could say I was um, a pretty good student in school. I was a B average student and did well in my studies, but I still was a very shy girl until I graduated high school and uh, college, actually. Anyhow, those are a few of the things we'll be talking about today. Whether you were a good student, a bad student, a straight A student, a straight B student, or an average B student, and on and on and on. Are you ready then? Let's begin with today's actual talk. Peter, I heard you were such a partier <laughs> in your middle school and high school years. I want to know where you got this information <laughs> from. Uh, I did like to indulge in a little bit of social activity <laughs> throughout my uh, middle and high school years. That's called secondary school in the UK, actually. Okay. It's one thing. Um, but I did study as well. Like It's not like I ignored my studies completely. I went to school. I was a good student. But yeah, on the weekends, I like to let my hair down for sure. That's I don't good. know. Rachel, you seem like you would have been a little bit of a goody two-shoes, like a straight-A student. I was. Really? Wow. <laughs> no, during my teenage <laughs> years, um, I was studious, but, mm -hmm. you know, I was able to balance my uh, friends and fun life with also my school life, so I was pretty good at um, just... Finding a middle ground between the two. Sure, and balance I was, is key. Right? Exactly. And I wasn't this like straight edge, like, you know, stereotypical Asian student. <laughs> I wasn't. I really liked to play sports and uh -huh. I really liked to spend time with my friends and, and study at the same time because I knew grades were important. Sure, yeah. definitely. With Asian parents, you get that drummed into you, right? right. That grades are important. You should have a good time as well. Right, exactly. But don't forget, education like helps you in later life. Right. And things like that. right. But I'm curious because my friends are the friends that I've had since middle school. Okay. Do you still keep in touch with people that you went to middle school with? I do. Because my town is so small, my best friend since elementary school lives right next door to me. Wow. So even though I don't get to see her for long periods of time, mm -hmm. when I do see her, it seems like we just pick up from where we left off. So oh, it's really nice. That is fantastic. But I want to know, did you have a rebellion stage? Because you know how people have that uh, just rebellion stage when they're <laughs> in middle and high school puberty uh, during puberty yeah not to anyone else but I feel sorry to my parents like I was very very horrible to them at times because oh, no. I was angry oh. but uh, you know I want to forget about that and I also want to forget about high school and those exams for university they were so stressful so glad it's over yes <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed today's actual talk between Peter and Rachel. Now, I guess uh, today we had a chance to find out more about Rachel when she was back in school. Hmm. She was a very studious student. She seemed to have studied a lot. So she was, simply put, a very good student, a straight A student, I think. Now, Peter, of course, I think he studied well in school as well as partied hard, um, but he did admit that he did cause a lot of trouble. So he caused his parents some problems and he said, I feel so sorry to my mom. Okay, now let's take a look at the actual talk line by line then. All right, here, first of all, Rachel began by saying, Peter, I heard you were such a partier in your middle school and high school years. Now, a partier is what? We are talking about a type of person. A partier 
basically is a person that really enjoys partying, that parties a lot, meaning、uh, has a lot of fun. Because you are a partier, it does not necessarily mean that you throw parties or have parties all the time. Now, party as a verb means to have fun with your friends. Okay, so she says, "I heard you were such a partier. I heard you partied a lot. I heard you had a lot of fun with your friends when you were in middle and high school." And then Peter says. I want to know where you got this information from. Okay, now Peter enjoys joking around, so he's just trying to make the、uh, conversation a bit more interesting. So he's saying, "Where did you hear this?" I kuyakin ori sa dorasa. Okay, so I want to know where you got this information from. And then he does talk about what he was like back in school. Now he stresses the fact by using did. I did like to indulge in a little bit of social activity throughout, okay, throughout my middle and high school years. Let's break it up here. First of all, so once again, he's stressing by saying, "I did, I did like to indulge in something." To indulge in something means to really enjoy doing something. Okay, you do it、uh, for pleasure. So he's saying, "I did like to. I did enjoy a bit of social activity. Social activity meaning activities involving other people. Fun activities like partying, going to the movies, going on picnics, things like that." And then he says, "That's called secondary school in the UK." Remember, we talked about primary school in the UK. Right now, we're talking about middle and high school, and they call it secondary, secondary school in the UK. And he says, "But I did study as well." Okay, so once again, he's stressing by using "did" right here. So I did like to indulge in some social activity, and I did study as well. So he's saying he played hard and he studied hard. Moving on, he says, "I was a good student. A good student meaning, yeah, he studied well. He studied in school, but on the weekends, I liked to let my hair down for sure. Now, what does that mean? To let one's hair down? Yes, that's right. To let one's hair down, like me. I have my hair down. It's not up in a ponytail. It's down." But this idiomatic expression means to kind of relax. Okay, just relax and enjoy what you're doing. We'll take a look at that expression in just a bit. So anyhow, he's saying I was a good student. I studied in school, but on the weekends I did like to enjoy myself. Okay, Rachel, you seem like you would have been a little bit of a goody two shoes. Okay, and then he says like a straight A student. We'll be taking a look at this expression too. But first of all, simply a goody two shoes, also called goody goody, is basically a person that always does the right things. They never do what is considered bad. So he's saying, "I have an idea. I think you were a really good student,、mm, a straight A student, meaning you got A's in all the classes." All right. Let's take a look at the starred possession、uh, expressions. First of all, we had to indulge in something. Indulge, indulge in something. It means to take pleasure in doing something, to enjoy doing something. So here is a sample sentence. You could say, "If you really enjoy water sports, I indulge in water sports on the weekends." I indulge in water sports on the weekend. What does it mean once again? To indulge in something means to take pleasure in doing something, to enjoy doing something. Okay. What about this? To let one's hair down. Remember, Peter said this on the weekends. I did like to let my hair down. That is what he said. Now, to let one's hair down means to relax. That's right. Once again. So here is a sample sentence. I think people should be able to. Let their hair down every once in a while. Okay, so really enjoy yourself without having to worry about something. Okay, 정말 걱정 없이 정말 즐기는 거죠. Okay, so to let one's hair down, I think you should. I think I should. I think we all should be able to let our hair down every once in a while, occasionally. 
Let's move on. There was also goody two shoes. Peter said, well, I think you might have been a goody two shoes, a straight A student. That is what he said to Rachel. So a goody two shoes is also called a goody goody. Okay. It means that someone that will always do the right thing and never anything bad. So here is a sample sentence. Now, she may look like a goody two shoes, but the truth is, she never gets caught for doing anything bad. Now, what does that mean? Now, on the outside, she may look like a goody two shoes. On the outside, she looks like someone that would never do anything wrong, but the truth is, she never gets caught for doing anything bad. So, this means everybody does things bad, right? Bad things, but if you don't get caught, you could look like a goody two shoes. Moving back to the actual talk. Here we go. Rachel says, I was. She's talking about her being a straight A student. During my teenage years, I was studious. Studious is another word for a very hard working person. Okay. A student that studies a lot. It comes from the word study. So studious is an adjective. To use to uh, you know talk about someone that really studies very hard, is very hard working, is very smart and intelligent, a good student, okay? But I was able to balance my friends and fun life with also my school life. So we'll take a look at this expression as well. Balance A with B or A and B. So I was pretty good at just finding a middle ground between the two. Between the two here, two meaning, right, uh, well, life with friends and life at school. So here, she says, I was pretty good at doing this, finding a middle ground. A middle ground is a position right in the middle between A and B, okay? 중앙, 중심, okay? So she says she was good at that. In other words, she's saying I was good at balancing A and B. And then Peter says, sure, balance is key. So he's mentioning exactly balance. All right, so balance A and B, or you can say balance A with B. You can say I tried to balance work and play. What does that mean? It means that you try to have a good time and also work very hard. 50% work, 50% play. You balance it out. What about middle ground once again? Middle ground was the position in the center, in the middle of something. So you could say, I finally reached a middle ground on the issue. So perhaps, say for example, you are in a situation where you and your friend or you and a group of people at work have different ideas. They have A idea and you have B idea. So you're arguing. What do you do? You have to compromise, right? So basically, A comes closer to you, you come closer to B, so you come to the center and agree to do something. You are finding or reaching a middle ground. Okay, let's move on. Now, Rachel says exactly, balance is key. I wasn't this straight-edged, stereotypical Asian student. Straight-edged, hmm, what does that remind you of? Straight. It's a long line, for example, with a long edge. Straight-edged person is somebody hmm, that will never, for example, drink, uh, do drugs, I guess, or do anything bad when they are in school. So a very studious, a good student could be called a straight-edged student. And she says, I really liked to play sports and I really liked to spend time with my friends and study at the same time because I knew grades were very important. So she's basically just explaining what she did or how she balanced school, her studies, and of course, you know, her fun life, life with friends. Let's move on. Let's take a look at that straight-edged word in just a bit. But first of all, Peter says, sure, definitely with Asian parents, you get that drummed into you. Hmm. If you get something drummed into you, 
What is a drum? Of course, we have a drum. It's called a puk in Korean, or even a drum, right? You drum something, you hit it, you hit it, and you hit it over and over and over again. If you drum something into somebody, you are making that person remember something. Okay, all right. And then he says, right, the grades are important, but I'm curious. And he asks another question: Do you still keep in touch with people that you went to middle school with? Keep in touch with. What does that mean? Do you still keep in contact with so and so? So let's take a look at these start expressions. First of all, we have straight edge, right? Rachel said、uh, she wasn't a straight edged, stereotypical student or an Asian, right? Straight edge. I was a straight edge in school, and I stayed away from anyone who was. A bad influence. Okay, straight edge, straight edge. You were very straight. You did not take any curvy roads. Okay, a good student could be a straight edge student. And then also drum something into someone. You're putting that thought into someone's mind. You can say, "Stop trying to drum what you think is right into me. Stop trying to tell me what is right." Stop trying to make me think what you think is right. Okay, 어떤 생각을 어, 머릿속에 집어 넣게 하다라는 말이에요. Okay, so to drum something into someone. Moving on, Rachel says because my town is so small. She's talking about how she keeps in touch with her friends. My best friend since elementary school. Okay, her friend from elementary school lives. Right next door. Okay, so even though I don't get to see her for long periods of times, when I do see her, it seems like we just pick up from where we left off. So it's really nice. Now, basically, she's talking about how she still keeps in touch with her friend from elementary school. And where does her friend live? Her friend lives right next door. Paro yakjibe sanda, right? So even if they don't get to see each other very often, even if they don't get to talk to each other often, well, she says we just pick up from where we left off. Pick up, meaning talk about the things we didn't finish talking about the last time. Okay, so pick up, pick up from where we left off. So it's really nice. And then Peter says that's fantastic. Now Rachel asks, "Did you have a rebellion stage in middle and high school during puberty?" Let's take a look at these words. Rebellion. Okay. Have you heard of rebel? Rebel. Panangja. Pananga. Okay. You can rebel, used as、uh, a verb that is to rebel. As a noun, you can be a rebel. Also, rebellion is a time period when you are out of control. Okay, you can be rebellious as well. So she's asking, did you have a rebellion stage? Was there a stage when you were young where you were hard to be controlled? You did everything you wanted to do your way. And then she says, during puberty. That word is a bit difficult to pronounce. The pronunciation is puberty. Puberty. Okay. One more time. Puberty. Okay. Sachungi. So she's basically asking: During puberty, when you were growing up, when you were becoming a man, did you cause a lot of problems? Was there a rebellion stage? Rebellion. Let's take a look. Rebellious stage as well. So rebel and rebel. Verb form once again. That is to rebel. As I said, the stress goes on the second syllable, and as a noun, you can be a panang a back in school. So you can say, "I was a rebel when I was a lot younger." Okay. Moving on, Peter says, "Yeah, not to anyone else." Hmm. He's talking about his rebellion stage or rebellious stage, but I feel sorry to my parents. Why? I was very horrible to them. At times, because I was angry.、Hmm. I think a lot of times in puberty, during your adolescence years, when you're growing up, especially boys, yeah, they do cause a lot of problems for their parents. They hurt them in many, many ways because they're angry. So Peter says, "I was horrible to my parents. I was mean to them. I would scream at them. I would shout at them. I was horrible to them." But he says, "But I want to forget about." 
that and about high school and those exams for university. And he says they were so stressful. They meaning what? Okay, all about his rebellious stage, all about high school and those exams. He wants to forget about all of them because they are so stressful. And of course, Rachel says, yeah, I'm so glad it's over. The I'm is omitted, so she says, glad it's over. All right. So basically, that brings us to an end to today's actual talk. It sounds like just as all the other boys or most of the boys, Peter... He did go through a rebellious stage during puberty, so he caused a lot of trouble and he was horrible to his parents. He regrets it now. I hope you don't have any regrets like this. Anyhow, let's take a listen one more time. Peter, I heard you were such a partier <laughs> in your middle school and high school years. I want to know where you got this information <laughs> from. Uh, I did like to indulge in a little bit of social activity <laughs> throughout my uh, middle and high school years. That's called secondary school in the UK, actually. Okay. It's one thing. Um, but I did study as well. Like It's not like I ignored my studies completely. I went to school. I was a good student. But yeah, on the weekends, I like to let my hair down for sure. That's I don't good. know. Rachel, you seem like you would have been a little bit of a goody two shoes, like a straight A student. I was. Really? Wow. <laughs> no, during my teenage years, um, I was studious, but、mm -hmm. you know, I was able to balance my、uh, friends and fun life with also my school life. So I was pretty good at、um, just. Finding a middle ground between the two. Sure,、and、balance was, is key.、Right? Exactly, and I wasn't this like straight edge, like you know, stereotypical Asian student. <laughs> I wasn't. I really liked to play sports, and、uh -huh. I really liked to spend time with my friends and and study at the same time because I knew grades were important. Sure,、yeah. definitely. With Asian parents, you get that drummed into you, right? Right. That grades are important. You should have a good time as well. Right. Exactly.、But、don't forget, education like helps you in later life. Right. Like right. But I'm curious because my friends. Are the friends that I've had since middle school. Okay. Do you still keep in touch with people that you went to middle school with? I do because my town is so small. My best friend since elementary school lives right next door to me. Wow. So even though I don't get to see her for long periods of time,、mm. when I do see her, it seems like we just pick up from where we left off. So、oh, it's really nice. That is fantastic. But I want to know: Did you have a rebellion stage? Because you know how people have that、uh, just. Rebellion stage when they're <laughs> in middle and high school puberty、uh, during puberty. Yeah, not to anyone else, but I feel sorry to my parents. Like I was very, very horrible to them at times because、oh, no. I was angry.、Oh. But、uh, you know, I want to forget about that, and I also want to forget about high school and those exams for university. They were so stressful. So glad it's over. Yes. <laughs> Uh, when I was a teenager, I was、uh, having a really hard time.、Uh, like other teenagers,、uh, I was going through a puberty. So I started to think about my future and my career and my life as a whole. And I had to think about going to school because I did. It's not because I didn't like to study really hard, but because I didn't really know the concept of studying really hard to be successful. Because I didn't really like my parents、uh, control myself and also and always on my back to study. So I started to talk back, and it wasn't really a great picture. And I, when I look back on my childhood and also my teenagehood, I regret a lot. I regret a lot of things. I should have studied harder and should have made a lot of friends because I was the one who sat back at the、uh, sat back in the classroom and didn't focus on studying in class. And I was a bad student. So if I could go back, I could. I would have. Like study harder and made good friends. Welcome back, everyone. We had a chance to find out about Ejin's teen years, what she was like growing up in her teenage years during puberty, right when she was becoming a woman.、Uh, I think we all have、uh, many similarities growing up.、Hmm. 
Yes, I do have regrets. I think I should have studied harder back in school, although I was a B average student. But what did she say about her teenage years? She said that she wasn't really interested in studying, but she had to think about her career. She did not want to be controlled by her parents, so perhaps she also went through a rebellious stage, maybe a, a slight one, not a strong one. But she says, yeah, if I could go back, I wish that I had studied harder and made more friends. Let's take a look at a few things she pointed out in her actual story. She said, like other teenagers, it's great to talk about other people. You know, compare yourself to others when you talk about a specific topic. Just as she did, like other teenagers, I was going through puberty. See? Puberty, there we go. That is a word you can make use of a lot when you are talking about your teenage years. So she says, I was going through puberty. And she says, so during puberty, I started to talk back. Talk back is what? Talk is to talk, to speak. But when you say to talk back to somebody, it means in Korean, 말 대답하다. Okay, so your parents tell you do this, do that, and you're like, why do I have to do this? I don't want to do this. No, I'm not going to do it. So you're basically talking back. So during puberty, she started to talk back. Let's take a look at a sentence using to go through puberty. I caused a lot of problems for my parents when I was going through puberty. Okay, make use of this word. Now keep it in mind, it's puberty, puberty. Let's take a look at what else she said. I should have. You're talking about your regrets. I should have studied harder and should have made a lot of friends. Here are a few sample sentences. I should have listened to my parents or I shouldn't have hung out with the bad crowd. I should have made good friends. I should have stayed away from bad crowds, meaning uh, the bad influence. Anyhow, these are some great points she mentioned in her actual story. So thanks, Eijin, once again. And that is a wrap. Uh, when I was a teenager, I was uh, having a really hard time. Uh, like other teenagers, I was going through a puberty. So I started to think about my future and my career and my life as a whole. And I had to think about going to school because I did, it's not because I didn't like to study really hard, but because I didn't really know the concept of studying really hard to be successful. Because I didn't really like my parents uh, control myself and also and always on my back to study so I started to talk back and it wasn't really a great picture and I when I look back on my childhood and also my teenagehood I regret a lot I regret a lot of things I should have studied harder and should have made a lot of friends because I was the one who sat back at the I sat back in the classroom and didn't focus on studying in class and I was a bad student. So if I could go back, I could I would have like studied harder and made good friends. Well, today we talked about our teenage years what we went through during our puberty, right? During puberty and uh, the good things and the bad things about growing up. We focused on things that we did as a teenager, even regrets we had, uh, perhaps. Yes, we all have regrets, but hopefully you don't have too many from your middle and high school years. I think we all do have something common though. I think most of us regret not having studied harder. I wish I had studied harder back in school. Anyhow, I think it's important for all of us, not only in school, but even at this moment, doesn't matter how old you are, indulge in something you enjoy doing and feel free. You know, don't worry about what other people's will think about you. Just be able to let your hair down every once in a while.
Okay, that is a wrap for today's lesson. I'll be joining you back again next time with another interesting topic. We're going to move on closer to now and talk about university years and preparing for jobs. So please do tune in for that. In the meantime, come to our homepage at www.ebse.co.kr and you know what to do. Leave us some comments and questions or even come by just to say hello. All right, everyone, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.